So now we've got the limbs on the tokamak and as you can see, they look absolutely fantastic. My name's Bill Huang, I'm a senior tokamak engineer at Tokamak Energy and we're in the construction room for our new tokamak ST40, which is right here. And there's eight sets of three in total, so we've got 24 limbs on there. They're copper limbs and they each carry 250,000 amps through the limbs. They make a, a core that goes around and we generate the two-order field which goes around the tokamak like this. And that's our main confining field in the tokamak and that's what is a, a key principle of any tokamak design. And we're trying to boost this field as much as we can. So this device, SD40, is designed for three Tesla, the major radius. Each limb is about a ton in total. And at the moment, we've probably got about 10 to 12 tons on there. But later, the full assembly will be more like 40 to 50 tons. So as you can imagine, there's going to be a lot more going on here than you can see at the moment. What you can see here on the top is, is a huge ring. That's called the E-ring or torque restraint ring. And when a tokamak operates, when you add the other coils, it, it does this twisting thing. And in order to stop it twisting itself, we transfer the torque, that twisting torque, into these rings. And then that gets transferred into the outer vacuum vessel and down to the bottom and then you restrain it by restraining those forces and then it, it, it stops it twisting. They're huge because in SD40 you, you've got big forces going to three Tesla. One of the kind of critical components which you might be able to see underneath is where these limbs come in, we have what's called a clamp ring. And this clamp ring is designed to push the copper, essentially, of the limb onto the center stack. And that's a very key feature that there needs to be a very high level of force there to get as much contact pressure as possible. That's where we measure the joint resistance. So around all of the joints, because it's one of the most critical parts of the toroidal field call, we monitor those and just check the resistance during operation. Despite the fact we're just measuring across two huge pieces of copper, when you've got 250,000 amps through there, you will measure a small resistance there and then we monitor that in time and just watch for any sort of non-linear deviation from what we'd expect. Most of the toroidal field generated by this core is not outside but inside the vessel and the toroidal structure helps keep the field closed and inside the vessel and that's what we want because that toroidal field is our, our bottle which holds our plasma. It's looking very, very exciting and there's going to be a lot more to see as we add other parts. It's a high field spherical tokamak. Once we get to three tests, it will be a world-class performing tokamak. <laughs>